Hey everybody, this is Jo, and I'm here in my Houston, Texas garden, and I'm in zone 9A, and I am going to give you a little walk around here in the middle of April. And um, included in this is the uh, second part. A minute ago, well, this morning, I made a video uh, about reworking the side of my bed, which is the side of this bed here. And so you'll get to see in this video what, uh, what happened. So I just love this view with the fennel and the parsley flowers and this little, uh, my, that's my favorite zinnia and I couldn't get anything to come up from seed this year, but that's from last year. And then this wonderful um, ami and then of course in the back, all the cleome that's coming up. So one of the things I did was move my uh, Budlia that I thought was gonna be six feet tall and it's going to be 0.6 meters, which is like two feet tall. And so that's the, uh, the lesson of the day is <laughs> read the tag carefully. Um, and so I've put my uh, pot of gumfrina back there uh, just as a placeholder until I can order. Um, I, I can't find anywhere in Houston the Budlia that I even rem remotely what I want. And so I'm going to order one online. And here's a little look. This is, um, gosh, what was the name of this? This is that new rose tri delta something something i'll put it in the uh in the description but it's a pale yellow um and it's it'll kind of go peachy um it in a i think as it ages i'm not really sure that's the first flower i've ever gotten off of it and this wonderful rose back there that is um caldwell pink and it's looking so pretty now let me walk you around to the, um, this edge that I've just reworked today. So I took out a bunch of irises and um, it's really almost, almost entirely irises and a few um, sort of ratty um, amaryllis bulbs that I don't even know what color they were. So here I've moved a chunk of this elephant ear right here to make this more of a little clump and then I have put in my um, whole bunch of uh, swamp milkweed, which I've covered with my little cages to keep monarch butterflies from landing on and putting uh, eggs on. I need those to have plenty of time to grow um, and get established. And so, but they should be about three feet tall, maybe four, with pale pink flowers. I have not grown that variety before. Um, so it's looking pretty bare here. So I popped the um, ivy geranium uh, there just to give it some color. You can see without it, this hasn't started blooming. That's black and blue salvia and it hasn't quite started blooming yet. And so you can see it's quite bare. And so I thought I'd put a little pop of color in front of the, um, the pond here. This is my next thing. I've got to figure out the whatever was in here died uh, in the winter and so I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to put in there and then I'm going to have to spend a couple hours in the pond <laughs> knee deep. And then the other thing I did, which I got all the irises here and this is the little budlia that I had uh, over over there that I so this shouldn't get a whole lot bigger it looks pretty sad I moved it in the middle of the day I put an umbrella over it to keep it uh, cool and out of in the shade um, but I shouldn't have moved it right in the middle of the day um, and the root ball just fell apart um, and so it's a very unhappy little budlia but I'm hoping it will perk up and and that's about as big as it's gonna get and I'm I'm very uh, happy with that sighting of it and then I gave uh, this Joe pie weed, which is get, uh, it's a dwarf Joe pie weed, and it's getting ready to bloom. And um, I've never grown that before, and so I'm real interested to see what the flowers are going to look like. And then there's uh, Caldwell pink back there. And then, as always, this killer rose, um, nearly wild. Here's Miss Doubtfire. Hello, pumpkin. Uh, 
and I really feel like things are really finally filling in. Thing, there are gaps still around the, the, uh, the big grasses that haven't really started growing very well. Um, and so that's why it looks, it always looks so bare around the grasses to me. Um, that one back there has really filled in more quickly than any of the other ones. The succulent theater looks really pretty still. And here's my new uh, pot that I just put together. I really had fun uh, in the last couple of months putting together um, new little pots with them really packed in tight. That's the other one I did right there. And I think it looks so cool. I've never made one that looked that good before, but I you know, put three times as many um, full grown plants as normal in there. So I kind of dropped a little money to make it look that good. Before I go much further, let's look at the black swallowtail butterfly caterpillars that I've got in here. Here they are. I've got about seven in here. I can't quite find them all right now. They kind of get tucked back in. There's one that's got lots of white on it and then most of them are much darker. Uh, and so it's always kind of interesting to see. I know I've picked them off of different plants so I kind of, it makes you wonder if all the ones that have the same coloring are all that have the same mama. But there's a real wide variety. Aren't you cute? Aren't you cute rolling in the dirt? I really am liking this little combination down here of the Texas blue bonnet and the little uh, Johnny jump ups. And then behind it, the primrose, the evening primrose. I love that little combo. And here's another, just this big bare spot. I need um, Cousin It, uh, this grass who I've forgotten the name of. I lost the, t it didn't have a tag when I bought it, but um, I need Cousin It to fill in because it's so bare um, all the way around. And then I'm so excited. I have a little Larkspur. I've only gotten purple ones, and this is a little peachy pink one. And so that makes me happy. And there's some purple ones back there. And I keep checking this cud weed every day to see if I've got any uh, American Lady caterpillars on there. I do not, not yet anyway. And then over here, I'm gonna see if I can step here because I know there's nothing planted here. I've got a delphinium that's gonna be a really beautiful, beautiful lavender. Let's see if I can get that side. Oh, with a little white fluff in the middle. And then this is uh, gentle Hermione and I think I've got a thrip problem again I can see him right here that's why it's not opening quite the way it's supposed to I'm gonna roll away roll us show everybody your belly you're gonna show everybody your belly no And I just look, let me, I'm gonna step back. What I'm really loving is this walkway. You know, it's got straight edges, um, you know, with this metal edging. But the way it, things have flopped over it, I love that it kind of gives it a little bit of a curve um, that, that isn't really there, but it's created by the mound, mounding of the plants as they climb over the, uh, the edge of the walkway. And I just think that's, that's lovely. I noticed it when I was sitting in that chair um, earlier today. really liking the shade. It really got shady. These uh, crepe myrtles filled in all the way in the last, I feel like in the last week. And it's so shady back here. I kind of forget um, the deep shade. And so really the only thing blooming is the um, shrimp plant back there at the moment. And then I've got this little white um, uh, euphorbia. 
But as I get further back, you can see there is more shrimp plant that is a lighter color, so you can kind of see it back there and some way back there as well. And then all this hot pink, um, four clocks. And then my little scented geranium. Look how wonderful. It's got so many flowers on it. And I like this little combo, the euphorbia and the knotweed, and then this little um, uh, scabiosa. And then all this fluffy, that's um, sort of half fennel and half ammy. And it's just so fluffy and pretty. And then the gray green of the salvia leucantha. I think that's a really pretty picture right there. And then I'm loving this. So that little ivy geranium that I bought on a whim that I didn't really, it wasn't even really blooming when I bought it. So it's just started to bloom, but I'm loving this combination. It's sort of coral. And then this is a um, vinca that's coral. And then I've got the coral nymph salvia. And so the colors of those three things together, and I think th this matches the middle of that so well but I'm loving, I moved that little uh, ivy geranium over so I could have that combination. And then this is a little bit coral-ish, not quite, it's more hot pink, um, but I just am, am loving that as well. little dahlias. I pinched that one back and then I pinched this, these two little babies. Did I pinch them? I think I did. I pinched these, but I, I, this is not getting enough sun. And so it's big and heavy and I'm not quite sure what to do, but I think I'm going to have to move it, uh, and find a little more light for it. And then these, I really never intended to grow them. These are daylilies. I didn't intend to grow in a, a pot. They were. I, this was just a stopgap, but they look so pretty. I kind of don't want to move them, but they need to get moved. I think into the sun, also. This is getting ready to all be blue. I think I've got one little salvia uliginosa that is blooming. Oh, there we go. And you can see what a beautiful blue that is. And I just, oh, there's another, I love this salvia because it can grow in the shade. So that's gonna be a little ocean of blue in the next week or two. And then this olive tree, it's doing really well. I mean, I lost a lot of it in the freeze, but it's got lots of new growth. Here's what's cracking me up. I dumped homemade compost in here. <laughs> so I have all kinds of nonsense coming up. I've got two different tomatoes. I know I put this on purpose. That is um, frog fruit and it will have tiny white flowers. I'm trying to get it to trail over the edge. Then I got all this this is all um, basil, and then I think that's a little, a little um, zinnia, and then I know I put this euphorbia in here, but oh my goodness, it's like it's such a hodgepodge, but it's kind of cracking me up. But I'm, you know, it, I wanted it to look really tidy with that little, you know, I'm trying to make this into a sort of topiary ball eventually in this little box. And I thought a little white euphorbia around the edge, maybe the frog fruit hanging down, but now it's got all this other stuff and I think I'm just gonna let it be a mess and see what that tomato looks like. I don't know whether it has enough sun to, to fruit or not, but, um, but I was trying to have a neat and tidy, very formal little thing and it's turning into um, kind of a circus. Lots of nice, uh, shady plants and oh there's actually one of these walking iris 
open. Look how beautiful. Isn't that wonderful? I just love those. And the leaf pile out of hand as always. And a, and a little check-in on all the little self-sown um, pale yellow Texas columbines. And then the ones I planted, I bought and planted, all of a sudden look so good. So I'm really, they looked pitiful when I put them in. And just in the last two weeks, they've just puffed up and they look so pretty. Again, I would just leave them for the, for the leaves if I could make it last through the summer. I think the leaves are so pretty and I like it so sprinkled in with this fern. Thank you guys for taking a look. I love hearing what you guys are doing in your gardens. I hope you guys have a great week. Bye-bye.